Alrighty, so here it is, the Merkava Mark 1. First off, a big shout out to all of the users over at the public creative server for hooking me up with this very useful user-made mission. So, I do not have access to the stat card due to this just being a user-made mission. I can't even see what shells I'm using, although I presume it is the stock shell, the M152, which is a heat FS round with 400 millimeters of flat penetration at all ranges. And yes, I said the stock round because this is not a premium vehicle. This is in fact a sort of standard uh, stock vehicle where you will have to research the modifications. It is just an event vehicle, not a premium. And in terms of modifications, tier four mod, as far as I know, your tier Tier 4 shell mod, that is, is the M111 APFSDS round, which has 337 millimeters of flat penetration at 10 meters of range. Now, as far as I can tell, the rounds on this are likely the same as on the shot cow delay, which also uses NATO standard rounds for the 105 rifled gun. Now, the tank itself looks very nice. As far as the only other piece of information I actually have on this is the BR, which currently sits at 8.7, something I think suits this tank rather nicely, considering the fairly lackluster mobility that it currently shows. Of course, this was actually taken from the dev server files, so everything is subject to change. Do keep that in mind. So when attacking a Merkva, where should you aim for? Well, certainly not the area where the engine is, purely because you have a big steel block in the way, as well as the transmission, and then the engine. So you may set him on fire, but it's likely he'll have FPE and he'll be able to put that out. Also, firing into sort of the back of the turret, there's no ammo there, so there's not really much point. One bit that I have found to be rather devastating, though, is the shot trap on the rear of the turret. Uh, that will fire downwards and knock out the crew. So... Definitely go for that point if you are behind them, or if not, just go for where the driver is, and that is the weakest part on the front of the tank. So now to kill some Russian vehicles. So first off, ZSU, Heat FS versus an SPAA. Yeah, I don't think it's going to end well for him. Uh, next up, we're going to go for a T-55 up on the hill to the left. Uh, so there he is up on the hill. I sort of do an on-the-move shot, and there we go. This gun is, of course, a stabilized 105 gun, so it does mean that shooting on the move is definitely an option. Next up, the T-62. I'm not just going to yeet a shot into him. I am going to go and try and hit the upper frontal plate. This is a heat FS round. I'm pretty certain it will be fairly devastating. Uh, so get aimed, and single shot, yeah. Central, uh, sort of hit the center of the uh, upper frontal plate, and it went straight through and gave me the kill. Next up, a T-10. Fairly heavy, one of the last real Russian heavy tanks. Um, so let's fire a shot, uh, see what happens. First one, yep, I think he's on fire, so we have done something right there. And, you know, pretty damn good there. So next up, the T-64A, the first real Russian sort of MBT, the first tier 6 vehicle that Russia actually got. First shot didn't do anything, second shot, yeah. He's dead. So if we go in a bit closer, you will see that actually went through the upper central section of the upper frontal plate, the composite block, and it went straight through. So as you can see, pretty damn good firepower there. Certainly did do a fair bit of damage. And here is a T-64B. My first shot didn't kill him. Second shot, lower frontal plate, went in, gave me that kill. So as you can see, even though it's the stock round, the heat FS round is actually fairly decent. And if you want a closer demonstration of how these rounds perform, do feel free to go and do a test drive in the Shot Caldele Centurion, of which has both of these rounds. So something that people are likely curious about when it comes to the Merkava is the mobility. Well, your engine is just under 1,000 horsepower, and the tank weighs over 60 tons. So... Don't get your hopes up. Uh, on road, you can reach up to 28 miles an hour usually. Uh, in reverse on road, it's usually around 7 miles an hour. Going up hills, on the other hand, uh, yeah. This tank doesn't like hills. It goes up at about 10 miles an hour at best, usually slower. So I would say try to avoid any steep incline. Try and stay on fairly flat ground, or if you are going up some kind of steep hill, maybe try and go on a road or some kind of track where you will have better sort of mobility. You'll be able to go a bit quicker. I would advise doing that. So another thing to look at is the neutral steering. Now, it doesn't actually turn on the spot. It goes around a central point. So this does mean it takes up quite a large area to actually turn the tank, and it isn't the fastest. Now you're gonna see off-road, it's quite bad. On-road, it's okay, but off-road, it does not like turning on the spot. So that is certainly a fairly big negative there. At least on flat uh, paved surfaces, it's okay. So on urban maps, you might be okay. 
but off-road I would certainly try and keep keep the tank sort of hidden because if you go out in the open uh, the chances of being able to escape are certainly fairly low or at least you will certainly be very hindered by the lack of mobility so I would say trying to stay away from the enemy and perhaps sniping rather than doing close quarters combat would certainly be an intelligent idea when using this tank and as you can see on even a fairly flat off-road surface the tank's top speed is really hindered so off-road it doesn't like it now of course this might just be because this is possibly a still work in progress model the files as I said were from the dev server so it is possible that this is work in progress things might change the mobility might improve and I am certainly hoping that it does now as you can see once you get on some kind of paved or tracked surface the mobility does improve and actually when you get up to a decent speed even off-road the turning while on the move is actually pretty decent here are some more little object tanks that you can fire at there's another one as you can see I'm about to sort of skid the tank at high speed the mobility actually isn't too bad so certainly something good to look at there so before we go and look at this tank in our in AB I am going to quickly show you guys the turret rotation and the actual gun uh, depression and gun rise in RB. So let's just go take a quick look at that. Alright, so the gun elevation. First off, minus 8 degrees. Technically it's minus 8.5 in the sort of files and info I can find. Although, in this case, we're just going to round it to minus 8. As you can see, not too bad, especially considering there is a whacking grey engine right in front of the gun. And then the vertical guidance is plus 20. So, not too bad there, all things considered. And of course, there are the machine guns. One, Browning M250 cow on top of the gun. Uh, sort of mantlet area, two 30 cows on top of the turret to the rear, and one 30 cow that is mounted coaxially. So now we are going to take a look at the turret rotation speed. So as you can see, little timer in the top right corner. We're just doing a standard rotation. This is in realistic battles mode, of course. So, you know, going around, and as you can see, not too bad. It's 13 seconds for a full rotation. So when jumping over into Arcade, what changes? Well, first off, the mobility. Generally, the turning of the vehicle is a lot more responsive. As you can see, turns very easily in the Arcade settings, as would be expected. So, thanks to the Arcade sort of aiming marker, we can now tell a bit better what can be penned and what cannot. So as you can see, the front of the tank mostly can, and those very small turret cheek frontal sections actually cannot. Um, most of the turret though can be penned, so from the front, fairly easy to pen, this is of course the 400mm penetration heat FS round, so it would be expected that that would be penned, but as you can see, those sections on the very tip of the turret generally don't really get penned, and don't cause a huge amount of damage to the vehicle. So those bits can't, although I have set fire to the engine, and it does explode rather nicely uh, once that fire really gets to the ammunition store, as you are about to see. And there's the turret, bye-bye Merc of a turret. So as you can see, big explosion there, he got set on fire. Generally setting them on fire, they should have parts in FPE, so we'll be able to put it out. Here's a Russian tank. Didn't do anything there, lower frontal plate, uh, not sure why, maybe it just went in, killed the driver or something, I don't know. Uh, second shot, again, doesn't do anything, I, that is hitting an angle from the sort of the side, so it is likely the round could just have no effect, considering it is heat FS. Another round though into the side does do its job rather nicely. I don't really play arcade, uh, I will admit, but as you can see, again, the mobility, far better in arcade, as would be expected. Arcade, generally, they buff up the mobility of the vehicles, and also the turret rotation and various other things. Generally, the speed that the vehicle does things is uh, generally improved in the arcade game mode. So not being much of an arcade player, let's go and jump over to the conclusions for the video. So one or two things to keep in mind, that these files were taken from the dev server. So this does mean they could still be subject to change, as well as the fact that anything to do with this is subject to change. And then also this vehicle is in its stock configuration, so this does not represent the best the vehicle will perform. So the BR first off, currently sitting at 8.7. Is that good? Well first off, the rounds in this tank, the M111 APFS DS round and the M152. To heat FS, both of which are in use on the Shot Caldai Centurion. Well, they're at 8.3 on the Centurion, I don't think they're overly overpowered there, so I don't see them being an issue on this tank. 
Um, next up, the crucified ability and the armor. They seem to be pretty decent, I would say, although of course we will have no real way of knowing until we have it on the live server after the vehicle has been fully released in an actual gaming environment where we can properly see how it practically performs. So generally, they are the things I would have to say. The mobility, of course, is fairly... Uh, lackluster. It's a very heavy tank with a fairly underpowered engine, so that is expected. So I think the 8.7 rating does fit it rather nicely. Uh, up tiers might be a bit punishing, uh, facing stuff like the Leo 2K, but you know, we're just gonna have to wait and see how it actually performs on the live server. Anyway, that was the Merc of a Mark 1. Do let me know in the comments what you think of this vehicle. If you're excited to get it, if you don't really care, let me know what you think. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider smashing the like button. Maybe even subscribe to the channel if you would like. That would be massively appreciated. Thank you very much again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.